Tonight on Nate News Watch. We take a look at how to safely remove bed bugs from your home. So you can imagine how hard it is to even notice that that's in your house somewhere. The city of Edmonton starts looking for a solution for the pothole problem. This is starting it earlier. Uh, we have been, of course, addressing potholes right through the winter season. Every time we get uh, a warm spell, we get pothole crews out there. City Council addresses broken LRT station escalators. All maintenance and required to make sure the escalators are operational. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. Health Canada has issued a warning about the dangers of the pesticide phosphine. It's believed the chemical was used in an attempt to get rid of bedbugs in a Fort McMurray apartment. Two children living in that apartment died. Alberta Health Services receives hundreds of complaints of bedbugs in rentals or hotels in our province. And pest control experts are urging people to call in professionals before trying to get rid of the pests themselves. Our Taylor Petty joins us live from our news centre with more. So phosphine is a chemical not registered for use in Canada. It is also not approved for use on bed bugs, one of the most difficult pests to control. So that's the registration number. So that is what's important because that, is, that, that tells you that this product is registered for use. The treatment for bed bugs varies. Professionals use a chemical and non-chemical approach and often the two are used together. Dry steam uses high temperature which takes care of the eggs. Vacuuming is used for cases that have high infestation and sometimes a canine dog is called in to track down the bug. The chemicals used by pest control are regulated and have detailed labels on how to use them properly. Phosphine is not approved for indoor use and it is not a registered product for, for that particular use of bed bugs. And so that's why we highly recommend uh, that a professional person deals with your bed bug issue because uh, the pest control companies across Canada are regulated in terms of the products we use. While you can buy bed bug products off the shelf, experts say it is crucial to call pest control when dealing with an infestation. This way you can make sure that the bed bugs are safely removed from your home. A bed bug is a tiny insect that feeds on human blood. They are known for hiding away in places such as beds, hence the name. When we sleep at night, we breathe carbon dioxide, which lets the bed bug know their host is ready for the attack. The bites are virtually harmless, and no serious medical conditions have been reported from them. Feeding on blood and moving from host to host, you'd think it would be a perfect pathway for uh, human diseases, but there are actually no known pathogens that use bed bugs as a, a vectoring host. So keep in mind that bed bugs aren't restricted to just beds, they can be found in other living areas. So Taylor, what kind of environment can we find these bed bugs in? Well, it is often thought that they prefer um, a dirty space, but talking to an expert, he informed me that they actually prefer a clean but cluttered. Taylor, if you're traveling and you come across a possible infestation, is there anything that you can do to make sure the bugs don't come home with you? Well, again, I touched bases with an expert on that, and he says if you feel like you've come in contact with an infestation or you have found a bed bug, it is uh, important to put those items into a dryer on high heat for 30 to 40 minutes to kill the bed bugs. Thanks, Taylor. That's Taylor Petty reporting live from our news center tonight. Nate News Watch, the next generation of news. Multiple people are facing a long list of charges after a series of personal ATM robberies in downtown Edmonton earlier this month. The Edmonton police have charged six people in connection with three robberies on Jasper Ave on February 8th and 9th. The suspects allegedly approached people using an ATM machine with a knife, threatening them to withdraw cash. The arrests come after police were called to Edmonton City Centre where a 45-year-old man was stabbed in a food court bathroom. The man was taken to hospital in serious but stable condition. Police believe one of the men responsible for the stabbings are also connected with the robberies. At this point in time, we believe we have identified and charged all responsible parties uh, from all the information that we have. 21-year-old Benjamin Crawford and 20-year-old Nicholas McLeod are charged with robbery and aggravated assault. McLeod and six additional suspects, including two young offenders, are charged with the personal robberies. The Alberta government predicts there will be a surplus this year. The latest fiscal update shows the province in the black, but warns of tough times ahead. Finance Minister Robin Campbell stated in his opening remarks on Tuesday that Alberta can no longer rely on oil prices to sustain the province's revenues. 
However, the 2014-15 third quarter fiscal update shows a surplus of $465 million, which is up from the $500 million deficit Jim Prentice previously predicted. It won't be easy. It won't be we had a very good first half of 2014 with oil prices, I say, hitting $108, and we were able to, you know, that money helped us. The budget is expected to be released sometime in the spring. Well, with the economic downturn and thousands of Albertans being laid off, some are resorting to early withdrawals from their RRSP savings for emergency funds. Early withdrawals come with high costs. Depending on how much you withdraw, you could be taxed up to 30%, and that's on top of any, any fees that may be attached to the funds. Certified financial planner Marion Mokanu says an early withdrawal should be your absolute last resort. Certain situations where it's a necessity, uh, financial hardship being one of those uh, times, uh, you're not going to really have a choice it's your last resort. Uh, that's really the only time I would advocate for you to use your RSP. Mokanu suggests saving three months salary to have on hand in case of a financial crisis. Edmonton Council has been meeting to discuss what can be done about the recurring problem of broken escalators at LRT stations. Council was prompted to meet after a number of complaints from or for those with mobility difficulties who have trouble ascending and descending stairs as well as people whose main method of transportation is light rail transit. For people with mobility impairment sometimes the elevator is a long way away they can use an escalator stairs would be a challenge for them again with an aging population this is going to be an issue as well and so uh, so that's that's who I tend to hear from the most. LRT stations have broken escalators widely because of problems with age as well as vandalism. Edmonton will see another report in June for maintenance performance. Pothole crews come out in full force usually in early spring. However, this year we'll likely be seeing pothole repairs start much earlier. Extreme temperature fluctuations, freezing rain and thawing periods throughout the season have played a role in making pothole situations especially bad this winter season. Council asked us what was a reasonable target to be at and we said 10% of the arterial roads in need of rehabilitation. City Council is committing $55 million to pothole repairs and road renewal this year. City crews have already filled 17,000 potholes in January alone. City Council this week met to discuss if anything can be done to fund repairs for McDougall United Church. A new report states that the estimated costs to fix the 105-year-old building sit between 18 and $25 million, which is more than double a previous evaluation. The city has agreed to work with the church and try to find a potential solution. The building goes back to 1871 and the congregation has been meeting there since 19. The dollars that could flow uh, to McDougal Church can only come if the church pursues historical designation, which so far they've been reluctant to do. Without the funds, the historic building risks being demolished. The city says it can't justify spending the millions and hopes other resources will step in. Well, it started in Nova Scotia when a grade 9 boy was bullied for wearing a pink shirt to school. But now, pink shirt day is much more than just a stand against bullying. No matter who they are, that they feel safe and comfortable. That they... Pink shirt day started in 2007 and it's not just for kids. Offices and post-secondaries are showing their support for creating a safe environment for everyone. The message? To accept and embrace people as, and be an example for healthy relationships for others to follow at all ages. Adults are wearing it in the workplace. If you walk around this building, people are wearing pink because everybody is saying we want to live in a safe and caring world and that's a really big key to changing things because it's about everybody. So it's a lovely day. Pink Shirt Day was celebrated in 25 countries this year. A group of Muslims took to the street on Thursday in order to address bad press and misconceptions about Islam. The group was in downtown Edmonton handing out white roses with notes attached which contained quotes from the Quran about peace. It is our duty to be part of you know, where we live, to help people who need help. Uh, that is Islamic duty. Musa says this won't be the last time his group makes public the message of Islamic peace. Last year, Edmonton was named the winner of the National Earth Hour City Award. This year, our city is reaching for an even more ambitious goal. 
We Love Cities campaign is an Earth Hour initiative recognizing cities all over the world that are making an effort towards becoming more green. They can get energy efficiency audits done on their own homes to find out where they can improve the energy efficiency of their house and reduce their overall energy use. There are lots of things that people can do and uh, we want everyone to spread the word about the We Love Cities campaign. You can vote for Edmonton on WeLoveCities.org. The winning cities will be announced in April in Seoul, South Korea. Coming up after the break, we show you what Nate is doing to kick off Pride Week. Nate is honoring diversity on campus by encouraging people to celebrate all backgrounds. We'll be having a series of events from hot chocolate to movie nights to bake sales and everything to really celebrate the diverse community that we have at Nate. I'm Nicole Stilger coming up in sports. I've got Oil Kings highlights for you. I give you an update on the Red Bull Crash Ice Track and the curling teams get ready for provincials. Hi, I'm Melissa McLean. Looks like we've got a chilly week ahead of us, so be prepared for those icy roads. I'll have your weather update coming up after the break. Well, I for one am ready for Edmonton to make up its mind. Uh, we started out all warm in the week and then it went to cold. What was up with that? I know, it's starting to feel like we're starting winter all over again. I'm ready for the spring. Melissa, please tell us it's coming. Unfortunately, guys, it's still going to be pretty chilly all across the province. Let's start with looking at our neighbors to the south in Calgary. Um, it's going to be a nice sunny day, high of minus 2, low of minus 11. Um, if you're in the mountains this weekend, it's going to be pretty chilly, but not too, too bad. Uh, high of minus 4, low of minus 17. Um, Fort McMurray, on the other hand, uh, so it's going to be a 30% chance of flurries. Minus 21 for the low and minus 5 for the high. Um, here in Edmonton, it's not as bad as um, Fort McMurray, so you can still enjoy your day. High of minus 2, low of minus 14, partially cloudy, a little bit of sun. Um, our <laughs> averages for this time of year, minus 11 for the low, minus 2 for the high, so it's not too, too bad. Um, it's way off from the records. 19, uh, 80, or 1889, it was uh, plus 14. And then in 1904, it was minus 35, so that's not very good. Um, starting off this week, we will be hovering around the averages for this time of the year. Um, Midweek, we will see a cold front uh, come through with lots of mixed precipitation, but don't worry, the cold won't last, because this weekend we will see those temperatures begin to rise again. I'm Melissa, and that's been your look at weather. Newswatch weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. Nate is celebrating diversity of all kinds on campus by holding its first ever Pride Week. It will run from March 2nd to the 6th and all staff and students are welcome to participate. Andrew Nikolaev tells us more. Nate hopes that Pride Week will encourage all people at Nate to embrace those of all backgrounds and walks of life even if they differ from their own. <laughs> It's just about being inclusive with all the students on campus and just showing that we are a caring place to be and that we're excited to include all students from all walks of life. Some of the events during Pride Week include guest speakers, workshops, a bake sale, and even a dodgeball game that people can attend. Nate's Safe Spaces Initiative, along with the Gay and Straight Alliance here at Nate, are proud to bring Nate's first ever Pride Week. Next week, there will be various activities and events throughout the week celebrating diversity here at Nate, available for staff and students. Everything from inviting Michael Fair to campus on Friday, to movie nights, to bake sales and everything, to really celebrate the diverse community that we have at Nate. Many students around campus say they think having a Pride Week is a step in the right direction and a positive event to promote acceptance. I think it's great, you know, I think they should get more exposure. Yeah, and it should be, it's a good initiative, yeah. It's a really good idea. I really prefer to help them. Andrew Nikolaev, Nate Newswatch. Nicole Stilger joins us now with a look at sports. Nicole, do we have uh, some of the uh, OOKS teams heading off to Provincials? Yes, we sure do. The volleyball teams and the curling teams are going to battle it out for ACAC Gold. But first, a look at some Oil Kings highlights. The Edmonton Oil Kings took on the Red Deer Rebels Wednesday night at Rexall Place. Both teams went scoreless in the first, but Mads Eller builds some momentum and flattens Wyatt Johnson to end a very physical first period. Second period, Connor Gay checks Davis Kosh from behind. Kosh is slow to get up and Gay will take a seat in the box. Oil Kings power play. 
paid in flurry confuses Luke Bertolucci's face with a puck and all that'll earn him is a double minor for high sticking. Yeah, it looks like blood. Oil Kings power play. A pass from Ashton Sautner to Brett Pollock who finds Lane Bauer on the back door and he shuts it. After 40, Oil Kings lead 1-0. Shots are 25-16 for Edmonton. Third period, a hooking call against Donald gives the Rebels a power play five minutes into the third. Fleury takes advantage and ties it up 1-1, but the play goes under review. Looks like it may have been tipped in by Adam Musil on a high stick. But the goal stands. Bad luck continues for the Oil Kings. Fleury finds the back of the net from almost the exact same spot. Edmonton will fall 2-1 to Red Deer. Steve Hamilton, with some palpable frustration in his voice, comments on his team's performance. One nice play that resulted in a goal and the rest of the time it's very, very average, just like the rest of our game. Our penalty kill is extremely average tonight. Guys just do not step up and accept the responsibility of what it means to play those minutes. The Ukes curling squads are in Grand Prairie this weekend for the ACAC Curling Championships. <laughs> Headed by longtime coach Jules Auchar, the Ukes are no stranger to the championships. Both the men's and women's teams earned themselves a silver medal in 2014 and snagged the top spot in 2013, winning ACAC gold. The Ukes are already guaranteed a spot in nationals a factor that skip Corinne Flory hopes won't skew their focus. Because we are going to nationals, whether or not we do well at provincials this year, because it's in Alberta, um, really it's more of like preparation for nationals. So it's just making sure that we're all on the same page, we're all playing well, we're getting along great and we're understanding each other good. The CCAA National Championships for men's, women's and mixed teams will be in Olds, Alberta from March 25th to 28th. With February 26th marking a mere 100 days until the FIFA Women's World Cup kicks off, Edmonton is getting pretty excited to play the role as host. Only 24 out of the 129 competing nations will be a part of the Women's World Cup. Edmonton will host 11 matches, which is more than any of the other six host cities, including the opening ceremonies, Canada's first two group stage, ma stage matches, and the bronze medal match. Individual tickets went up for grabs starting February 26 as well, and sales were not disappointing. They've sold uh, 550,000 tickets so far in our package sales, and our visa pre-sale alone sold 150,000. That's uh, for all six cities. Um, so we're expecting a great return over the next little bit. The first game will feature Canada playing China on June 6 at Commonwealth Stadium. Only two more weeks until Red Bull crashed ice hits Edmonton and the progress on the track is coming along nicely. 36,000 litres of saltwater brine are piped through the refrigeration system, then through refrigerated rubber mats that st stretch the length of the track. The ice on the track is made to be five times denser than an NHL rink. The race left Belfast, Ireland last weekend and is en route to Edmonton for the finals. Competitors from more than 15 different nations will battle down the 415 meter ice track featuring gap jumps, a 45 meter vertical drop, ice steps and nine turns, winding down, over and through six different levels of the Shaw Conference Center, all to earn enough points to be crowned ice cross downhill team world champions. For my end zone challenge, I wanted to try something I've never even once attempted. So I headed to Complete Martial Arts and Fitness to learn how to box. Look out, Mike Tyson. First, we Our warm up. Open, nice and loose, ready to kick and punch and knee. Time for the gloves to come on. Screen. I can't see my highlights at all. I'm ready to go. We start Shh. with the jab. And jab. Shh. Good, so now we're gonna move on to the fun part, the power punching. My favorite okay. part. So your front foot, the one that's stuck to the mat is called your anchor. It connects me to the mat, that's where my power comes from. Your back foot is called your pivot. Good, I'll see more motion from this. So you don't ever hit with your shoulder, you hit with your hip. Now I feel this like I'm getting it. Stick. You find a way, you find out how far away I am, and then you pivot right through the power. That's straight, right down the pipe. Now to learn the hook. Don't worry about speed or power, just rhythm, okay? So hands up nice and tall, jam. Pivot through your cross, pivot through your hook. This one's gonna come up. Yeah, jab, cross back to your face. Pull. There you go. Three more. 
I'm pretty much Good. nailing it. That's it. Now to work in a kick. Oh, I'm gonna kind of put my head down. Put some more weight on it and kick it like you need it a little bit, okay? Come on, kick. Hey, that's it. Good. Step. Bring it back. Quick second to regroup. Take your time. Pivot. Pivot. Step. Good. I want you to watch that knee. Big knee. Good. Cross up. Turn. Tip. Yeah, that's it. Good. Time for Cam to show me how it's really done. I might need some more practice. Obviously, I'm sweating my face off. Cam <laughs> kicked my butt, but how do you think I did? Very good. It's pretty fun. Uh, anybody wants to come down here and check out the gym, feel free. You did really well. It's hard, I know. We've been working hard, beating up the bag, but I think we won. Oh, cheers, Cam. Cheers. So guys, who wants to be my new sparring buddy? You know what, I don't know if I'll take you up on that, but you looked like a total knockout. Yeah, sorry Nicole, my mom says I'm not allowed to hit girls. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we volunteer at the Edmonton Humane Society. We got the chance to help out animals and see firsthand just how vital volunteers are at the Edmonton Humane Society. The volunteer opportunities that exist are many. Um, everything from walking dogs and cuddling cats to uh, helping uh, through our foster care program. So basically opening up your home uh, and helping animals socialize. Tonight on Entertainment, my friend here tells us what's going on at the TELUS World of Science. He also says there's going to be a viral video and even more coming up in Entertainment. Outerwear provided by Elite Sports and InnoTech Inspection Solutions. Hair services by Rock Salon and Spa. Volunteers are always needed to help out with the animals who are waiting to be adopted. Michaela and I went to the Edmonton Humane Society this week to give a hand feeding and interacting with the animals. The Edmonton Humane Society strongly relies on the support of the community and for volunteers and donations. It has about 900 volunteers to assist with everything from dog walking to cuddling cats. Director of Advancement Travis Grant says he's happy with the aid from the community. We just uh, have overwhelmingly tremendous support from the community who want to come in here and help us care for the thousands of animals who come to the Edmonton Humane Society every year. If you are unable to volunteer, the Edmonton Humane Society is always happy to accept cash, food and toy donations. Tonight in entertainment, we take a look at a crazy Russian viral video. We also take a look at what's going on at the TELUS World of Science and all that and more coming up in entertainment. <laughs> You Can Youth Services Step Up and Step In program has made a short film about bullying with the help of Pixel Blue College. I saw other people getting bullied and I just stood there. Don't be like me. Stand out. The film shows some first-hand experiences that different members of the youth group have had with bullying. The main purpose of the video is to reverse thoughts that people may have about bullies and create some empathy towards them rather than viewing them as bad people. I think it's important to have like a counter, counter ideas to challenge like the dominant ways that we see um, other people and the dominant ways we see ourselves as well. So it's important to have those like other narratives that we can turn to. UCAN is hosting a comedy night on March 21st to help support at-risk youth. Now Edmonton has many different events all year round, but if you want to see something a little bit different, you better hurry to the TELUS World of Science. The Indiana Jones exhibit has many different props and costumes from all four movies, including the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail, and the Crystal Skull, with many other famous items from the franchise as well. There are also screens playing clips from the movie showing the particular item's significance. Along with the props, there are also real artifacts from around the world being shown. The exhibit ends April 6th, but don't worry, only a short month later, a new exhibit comes right in. We have Dinosaurs on Earth coming in May. It opens May 16th, and yeah, we're really excited to bring in these dinosaurs. We've got some great programming that's going alongside of it. The dinosaur exhibit will surely be a hit among kids and adults alike. Now, if you've ever seen Will Smith on TV or in movies, you can pretty much expect anything from him. 
So what now? Can I walk you somewhere? I'm staying here, upstairs. Oh, really? Oh my god, it's my husband! Whoa, whoa, whoa. From fighting me, aliens to being the freshest guy in Bel Air, and then finding some more aliens, Will Smith is back with a new movie for you to watch. Focus stars Will Smith and Margot Robbie in this action crime romance movie. A professional con man takes an apprentice under his wing, but as the plot develops, so do the feelings. It's from the same creators who brought you Bad Santa and I Love You, Philip. I know you're doing something big. I want in. Will Smith will make this movie a good one. It's in theaters now, and I have a movie ticket for two people to give away. Just contact us on Twitter at Nate Newswatch and use the hashtag NateFocus for your chance to win. Now, Russia is the home of many odd things, like bears riding unicycles, crazy dash cam videos, and a president who rides his horse while shirtless. Now you can add one weird YouTube video to that. So I only know one swear word in Russian, and you can hear it being said quite a lot in this video, so I just played it safe and put some appropriate music on top. So I have no clue why they thought this was a good idea, just a couple of friends with a camera and a gasoline-soaked torch to have some fun is the best explanation I can give you. Like, I, I suppose if you live in a country as big as Russia, you might be far away from all the fun stuff that we take for granted. So I guess in Russia, fun sometimes means letting your friend run over you with a large industrial vehicle and throwing a Molotov, Molotov cocktail at him while your buddy films it all. This has been your look at entertainment. Live long and prosper. Rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, that's some sad news about Leonard M oh, Nimoy. What a legend, that man. My goodness. You know, um, I have to say, I don't have any plans for the weekend, but I can guarantee I'm not going to be doing what those Russians did in that video. I'm, I do have no interest in being run over by um, You know, uh, maybe the fire part, but not not the run over. Okay, that's, well, that's that's a little bit weird, I gotta say. <laughs> no, no no interest in either. That I mean, was, you know, the weekend comes and I'm like, I feel like getting run over by a large industrial yeah. vehicle this weekend. Thank I you think. so much for watching. You can check us out on natenewinchwatch.ca. Absolutely, have a good weekend. Thanks for watching.